Hello, welcome back to our United Nations Climate Talks coverage here in Durban, South Africa. Apologies for the unanticipated uh, blackout there. The, the internet connection at the UN is notoriously unreliable, but we do our best with what we've got. Um, I'm delighted to have been joined by uh, Juliana Rassab, who works for the Adopt a Negotiator project, and you are tracking the Brazilian negotiator here at the talks. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Good news, because what I would like to talk to you about is the, uh, the, the forest code in Brazil. Now, people who've been following our website for the last week will know that there's a, a bit of controversy at the moment about Brazilian forests. So maybe you could give us an introduction as to what's happening. So uh, this year we had this bill that passed in the House of Representatives in the first semester mm -hmm. and then it, w it went to the Senate and this week the Senate voted, it was supposed to be voting this le legislation mm -hmm. and as it is a very controversial issue in Brazil they postponed the votation for today. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's going to happen today or next week or maybe it will be delayed. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that Brazil, uh, if Brazil approves this law, uh, it's going to compro compromise its position and its promise to reduce uh, emissions from deforestation that it assumed in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And also we have this national policy on climate change that the main, the main commitment is to reduce emissions from deforestation because uh, it's the main uh, source of uh, emissions in Brazil. Okay. And what are the implications of this law being changed? What What are the impacts of this law being changed? So basically, it will let uh, landowners uh, they they that uh, had deforestation in their lands before 2008 they will be will be forgiven. They won't have to recover it, neither pay a, a fine for it. And also it will facilitate people to, def uh, to new areas of deforestation in Brazil. Okay, so why is this happening? If, if there's been all of this deforestation that's happened before that wasn't supposed to be allowed and that is just going to be forgiven and if it's going to facilitate new deforestation. I, I thought that Brazil had quite a good track record in recent years about stopping deforestation. How has this been allowed to happen? Yeah, the thing is that the, the Senate in Brazil and the House of Representatives representatives they are uh, mostly conservatives mm -hmm. so it's not like the the most part of population in Brazil doesn't doesn't agree of uh, with what's go it's, it's happening now but they can do anything okay. and I, I think I read yesterday that the, the um, environmental groups are coming out and saying that an area the size of Germany Austria and Italy combined something something huge on that scale yeah, is, yes. is at risk so this is a big issue have campaigners and activists responded in Brazil? Is there a big movement against this? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, uh, the civil society delivered a petition with a million and five hundred thousand signatures to the government, and they have like a rally in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, and also here, uh, Eco. That's the bulletin that we have every day here. That's published by Ken. We published a, an article about. The, the what's happening in Brazil, trying to influence it, and we hope that the, these talks influence the results in Brazil. Because President Dilma, during her campaign, she said that she will not allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's been it's been a, a big issue in Brazil as well, and and it's something that we should clearly uh, uh, track over the coming two weeks. Have you got any predictions as to how this will play out? The, from what I've read in the mainstream media, people are not optimistic that, that it will be stopped at this stage. Yes, maybe it will be voted in Senate and it, it will pass and then it's up to, to President Dilma to veto it. Okay. Let's see what she's going to do. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep our eye on, uh, on it over the next couple of weeks and maybe we can have you back, Juliana, once, yeah. once the vote has become clear. Um, I'm just going to ask our, our tech guy what video he's got queued up for us to go to. Uh, he's shaking his head. Jamie? Yes, you just look for Can you bring us the African uh, press conference? African group press conference? Possibly? Yeah. Okay. Sure. We'll give you the African uh, group press conference in a couple of minutes. Um, and in the meantime, uh, Juliana, can you fill us in about what Adopt a Negotiator does here? Because I've introduced you saying that you track the Brazilian negotiator. But what does that mean? So we have this uh, project, Adopt a Negotiator, that 
Uh, it, it was established before Copenhagen and we are here in a team of 10 people, 10 young people that are tracking uh, what our delegations or negotiators are doing here. So we, we have people from, uh, apart from me, from Brazil, we have uh, people from the US, from Pakistan, from India, from Mexico, from Europe, uh, Poland. Uh, France and I, f I don't know, I, I can't remember the rest, but we are in 10. And we write every day, in a, we have a blog, mm -hmm. and we tell what's going on in the negotiations. I write in Portuguese, mm -hmm. because my, my audience is uh, citizens from Brazil that are not specialists, but want to know what's going on here. And uh, the other guys write in their own language. For example, we have Marvin that's tracking China, so he writes in Chinese. And we write daily blogs and also we post videos and everything that's going here. We live tweet and we are posting uh, the whole time in Facebook too. Okay, so it's, it's a great way for people to, to follow these talks yeah. along with One Climate, of course. Um, so where should people go if they want to, if they want to, to, to learn about Adopt a Negotiator? So adoptanegotiator.org and our Twitter is at Adopt Negotiator. Okay, excellent. They can follow that. And just because you have been uh, uh, tracking the Brazilian negotiator at these talks, I want to take the opportunity to ask you, what's the state of play here? Um, what are you expecting to see from Brazil here? So Brazil is like a, a, an important country in these talks because he can be the bridge between developing countries and developed countries as he's one of the largest emitters in the world. And he, he has an important role to in the basic group that's formed, formed by Brazil, India, South Africa and China. And they say uh, uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to track Brazil because they define their position within BASIC and G77 in China and uh, so I hope that Brazil will not let, let this bill pass mm -hmm. because it will comp really compromise its, its position as a, an environmental leadership including in the climate, talk, climate talks. Mm -hmm. And so what do you expect to, to happen in the next well, few weeks here and, and, and playing out into the coming years of these negotiations? I hope that we have finally, not here, we know that's not going to happen, but like uh, uh, a roadmap to our like, fair, ambitious and legally binding agreement mm -hmm. to really face climate change. And I know that you're, you're a veteran of these talks now. How many, how many have you been to in total? Uh, five. Five. I've been following the talks since ba Bali. Okay, and so in light of that, are you optimistic? Are we moving in the right, in the right direction? The people who are just tuning into our coverage for, you know, for the next week and a half now, this is our first day, um, what should they hope for? What, how big should their expectations be? And, and what would represent a, a kind of positive outcome from these talks? Uh, I, I, I'm not going to say that I am optimistic, but at the same time we have to understand that we have like 100, almost 200 countries that are negotiating things that are really important for their economies. And so I think they have to talk a lot, talk, talk, and but not like we, uh, now it's time to start deciding things about climate change and how it how they are going to face it. Okay. And do you think that that's something that is going to be achieved through activism here? Do you think it's something that our viewers should pick up on back home and, and push at a national level? Because uh, having attended, I think this is my third conference now, and there's a lot of activism that goes on at the talks and it's very inspiring. But to, to walk into this conference for the, the, the third time, a lot of it feels very similar. And I, I appreciate that for viewers at home, it's probably very difficult to see the progress um, is it is it a case that people just need to to forge ahead at home anyway and to push the national agenda um, and, th and then see what comes here or or should they be concentrating on the talks primarily do you, do you think where where can activism be most effective I think it's uh, it can be most effective nationally mm -hmm. but also we have to be looking what's going on here because it's here that they are deciding everything that's going to be voted in our domestic legislation. Okay. 
So in light of that, we'll come back to you at the end of this week and, and see where Brazil has moved to, if that's okay. And also, um, once this decision has been made within Brazil regarding the forest code, this is clearly a, a really important uh, decision being taken at the national level with uh, an unfathomable, the huge uh, 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 risk at stake of losing, you losing a great amount of forest. So we'll come back to you and we'll get your update on that later in the week. Thank you for joining us, Juliana.